स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Hello everyone. This is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the living organism. And in this context, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the classification of the living organisms, and then we have also discussed about the evolution of these organisms. So while and and in the previous module, we have also discussed about the uh we we have discussed about the cells so we have discussed about the prokaryotic cell or the eukaryotic cell while we were discussing about the prokaryotic or eukaryotic cell we could understand that the uh, cellular functions are being performed by the tiny biomolecules which are present in these cells and uh, uh so to understand the activity or to understand the uh, uh, cellular functions it is important for us to understand the biomolecules and in that context in this particular module we are discussing about the different types of biomolecules and uh, if you recall in our previous lecture we were discussing about the nucleic acids so we have discussed about the dna as well as the rna and we have discussed about the structure as well as the different uh, functional properties of the biomolecules uh, the nucleic acids and uh, the nucleic acid is required for uh, for maintaining the genetic informations so mostly the dna is the major form of genetic uh, genomic dna or it is the uh, the form which which actually carries the genetic information from the one generation to the next generations but where there are exceptions where in some cases the rna is also be the major molecule which is utilized for carrying the genetic informations so in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the uh, another biomolecules and then another biomolecule what we are going to start discussing about the carbohydrates so let us start discussing about the carbohydrates and uh, so what we were discussing we were discussing about the different types of biomolecules and uh, we have discussed about the dna and rna and the dna and rna is required for storing as well as maintaining the genetic information from the one generation to the next generations except uh, viruses uh, the dna is the major uh, molecule which is responsible for storing the genetic information in most of the organisms now in today's lecture we are going to start discussing about the carbohydrate so when we say about the carbohydrate the carbohydrate is required for mainly for the energy productions but in some cases the carbohydrates are also been part of the uh, building blocks they are also responsible for modifying the some of the proteins and some of the uh, another biomolecules like for example the carbohydrates are important for generating the glycoproteins and all those kinds of molecules and these glycoproteins have a significant role in the various types of uh, the uh, biological activities like uh, whether it is for the biological recognitions or other kinds of things so let's start discussing about the carbohydrates so carbohydrates are commonly been called as the sugar right and uh, so carbohydrates uh, in contrast 
to the protein and the lipids the carbohydrates are mainly being utilized to provide as a source of energy to run the biological activities plants are the primary production of the carbohydrates by the utilizing the uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide water and the sunlight if you recall uh, we have discussed about this when we were discussing about the chlorophyll right so, or when we were discussing about the chloroplast so what we have discussed is that the carbohydrate uh, the is plants are actually uh, sequestering the uh, the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and that's how they are mixing that with the water and in the presence of the sunlight uh, it is actually giving the sugar molecule so it is actually giving the sugar molecule and this is the sugar right and uh, why it is required to the sunlight sunlight it is required for running the light reaction and it is requesting the carbon as well as the uh, water molecules to generate the simple sugar molecules so carbohydrates are present in very simple as the monosaccharides to complex form as the polysaccharides as well as the glycoconjugates so let's first start discussing about the monosaccharide which is the simplest sugar right so this is the uh, carb uh, monosaccharide commonly known as the glucose so monosaccharides uh, it is the simplest carbohydrates aldehyde or the ketone with two or more hydroxyl group the backbone is made up of of 3 to 6 carbon with the hydroxyl group attached to it and the monosaccharides are always being named as per the number of carbon atoms are present so these simple sugars are named by the number of carbon atom present in each molecule for example triose triose is the sugar which actually going to contain the three carbons such as the glyceraldehyde so what you see here is the number of examples of the monosaccharides so here you have the one carbon here you have two carbon here you have three carbon uh, two carbon uh, and here you have the three carbon uh, then you have the three carbon uh, you have three carbon and so one carbon it is called as uh, d glycero then if it is a two carbon then it is called as the orithro and if it is uh, three carbon then there are many examples of three carbons like the uh, arabino like so and all that so mostly it is been called as the triose so if it is a this commonly known as the triose whereas if it is a four carbon then it is actually going to called as tetrose uh, such as the arthrose and then it also has uh, uh, arthrose or the triose then if it is a if it is a five carbon then it is going to called as pentose for example the ribose and then if it is going to contain the six carbon then it is going to called as the arabinose xylose lysose and the, if it is six carbon then it is going to called as hexose with the six carbons such as the glucose and fructose so what you see here is uh, that uh, single carbon examples like the glycero or the two carbon examples such as the d orithro or the d trio and the three carbon examples like the arabino like so uh, ribo and then it is uh, uh, also the three carbon examples so i have given the many examples and then it is the four examples the four carbon examples where you have the d allo and uh, the d galactose so this is the uh, five carbon right and uh, so, so so these are the simple uh, monosaccharide sugars what is present right and uh, so these carbon atoms which are uh, are chiral centers to give the stereochemistry sugar found in the nature right so these if you see a simple carbon sugar what you see here is that uh, all the carbon all the carbon atoms are actually having the attached to the different types of groups right so this one for example it is on one side attached to the hydroxyl group one side onto the oh uh, h group and the other side it is actually adding with the aldehyde group so this is actually another first carbon chiral center second chiral center third chiral center fourth chiral center so this is these this actually gives 
the uh, stereochemistry which is found in the nature and because of that the the uh, the carbonyl carbon which is present on to the first carbon is actually been uh, attacked on to the last uh, uh, hydroxyl group and that's how it is actually going to give you the cyclized products so it can give you the two different types of cyclized products so the reaction between the first carbonyl group and the fifth carbon gives the cyclized form of the sugar and that's how the sugar can actually exist in the three different forms it can actually exist in the linear form or it can actually be able to exist in the two different types of cyclized product cyclized forms either it can be a alpha form or it can be a beta form apart from that we are uh, going to discuss uh, all other kinds of the because it has a stereo isomeric uh, uh, carbon so that's why it has uh, different types many different types of stereo isomers as far as the cyclization is concerned uh, it can actually be able to form the two different types of cyclization products the first product which is called as the hemistyle or hemiketyl formations that is occurring between the adduct formation between the uh, carbon and the aldehyde groups so the linkage formed between the aldehyde group and the alcohol is called as the hemiacetyl linkage and this is present in the six uh, six membered pyranose rings so for example this is the glucose right so if the uh, if the uh, one or fifth if the one is actually making a cyclization product with the five then it actually be able to uh, form the cyclization product right so if it is this is the aldehyde group and if it is attacks on to the uh, fifth uh, uh, carbon so that's how it is actually going to form the hemiacetyl uh, group hemiacetyl formations and that hemiacetyl group form can be can be uh, can be represented in two different forms so what you see here is actually the fischer formula where the uh, carbon is connected to this one or it can be actually be able to form uh, shown into the howard's formula so this is the uh, the howard's formula where the uh, hydroxyl as well as the hydrogen groups are being placed onto a uh, onto a plane and it is actually going to show you which one is going up uh, on the top of the plane or which are on the bottom of the plane so once you actually going to have the uh, the carbonyl group which is attacked onto the fifth carbon and it will going to form the hemiacetyl uh, uh, groups or hemiacetyl linkage that can be represented by the two formula fischer formula and well as well as the howard formula same is true for the another one right where you can actually have the hemiketyl formations so hemiketyl formation the linkage between the keto group and the alcohol is called as the ketyl linkage for this is forming into the five membered ring such as the finrose ring so what will happen when you have the carbonyl group or when you have the keto group and that keto group is present on to the second carbon so that keto group is actually going to attack on to the fifth carbon and that's how it is actually going to form the hemiketyl uh, formations and that's how it is actually going to have the two different forms this is the howard uh, this is the fischer's formula and this is the howard's formula so in same way it's going to show you the five member ring and then it is going to show you the placement of the different groups either on top of the plane or the bottom of the planes the cyclization is actually generates the additional chiral centers and that contributes into the stereochemical complexity of the molecule for example this is the glucose molecule where you have the carbonyl group which is on the number 1 then you have the number 2 3 4 5 and 6 so all these when it, there will be a cyclization product between this and this that is actually going to form the this cyclization product right so that's actually is actually going to give you the additional uh, uh, you know chiral center because initially this one the first carbon is actually not having any chirality right it is actually been attached to the oxygen on one side hydrogen on one side so this one is not uh, this is a chiral molecule but when the there will be a cyclation product and this is going to connect it like this then it is actually going to also going to acquire the chiral uh, chiral t so because of that it actually can have two oh on this side and h on that side so that's how it is actually going to be represented like this so now you see this is additional chiral center what is going to be developed onto the uh, uh, glucose molecule and because 
this can be represented in two different way it can be either the OH on to the bottom side or OH can be on the top side and that is how the it can actually be able to adopt either the alpha form or to the beta form. So, depending on the rotation of the different types of groups or the ability of the sugar to rotate the plane polarized light it can be either we represented by the you know it can actually be able to have the dextrorotatory sugar or to the levorotatory sugars and these dextrorotatory sugar is represented by a plus sign or to the small d sign whereas the levorotatory uh, sugar is actually going to be represented by the negative sign or to the small l sign. Apart from because as I said no the because it has the different types of chiral center it can have the acquire the ability to rotate the plane polarized light it actually can have the different types of stereoisomers. Now one of the stereoisomer is the enantiomers. So enantiomers are actually be the mirror image to each other. So if you keep a mirror here right if you keep the mirror here what you will see in this one is actually going to be the mirror image of this. So, uh, you know that all the groups are going to be flipped uh, to the uh, 180 degrees. So, for example, in this one uh, except the first uh, uh, group all other groups like see the OH is on this side on this one is OH is on this side the OH is in this side this is OH in this side. So, that is how all these are actually being flipped by the 180 degree and that is why this form is called as the L, L form and this one is called as the D form. So, they, so what I say is do not be get confused when you see the L and D versus the small n and, and small d right. This is small L is actually the levorotatory and if this is D is actually called as the dextrorotatory whereas here we are actually going to show you the enantiomers where you have the capital L form or to the capital D forms. Then we have, so this is what he may explain here, so D sugar, so the compound that have the last asymmetrical carbon in the same orientation that is called as the D forms whereas the L form it is related to the L glycosidase. So what you see here is if the last asymmetrical carbon is actually having the uh, groups on to the same side right this one you see this one it has a functional group which is on this side and uh, this one also has the functional group on to this side then this is called as the D form whereas in the L form it is actually going to be in the reverse orientation. So, the group is actually on to the this side whereas the last uh, carbon has a group on this side. So, they are actually being presented into the two different uh, modes. And that is why these two are actually going to be the mirror image as well. So, this D, this is the D form and this is the L form. Same is true for the glucose also. In the glucose, this is the last asymmetrical carbon, right? So, if the last asymmetrical carbon, the groups are on this side and if the uh, this one also has a group on this side, then this is called as the D form. Whereas, in the L form, it is actually going to be on the reverse orientations. Now we can have the another kind of uh, uh, isomerism that is called as the epimers. So the isomers differ as a result of variation in the configuration of the OH and H on the carbon atoms as 2, 3 and uh, 4 glucose molecules. So you can see in a glucose molecule at 2, 3, 4 and 5 you have the hydroxyl groups and that is why the positioning of the hydroxyl as well as the H group on the different carbon atoms or the differences between the different orientation of the OH and H on the different carbon atom, you can have the different types of epimers. For example, this is the D minus because you have the epimerization of the OH groups, right. So, OH is on the this side, right. So, OH is on the this side. Uh, so, this is called as the epimer at carbon 2. So, and that is present in the D minus. Similarly, you can have the epimerization in D glucose so that here also you can have the epimerization at carbon 3. So, you have the uh, carbon 3 at different orientations. So, this is this is the standard molecule where you have the uh, epimerization and this is going to be used. Then is in, in the case of D galactose, you see the D galactose at the carbon 4 the orientation of the OH is on this side. So, this is actually going to be different from the other sugar. So, for example, in this one you have the OH on this side, in this one also you have the OH on this side and uh, 
So and so in the glucose, what you see here is uh, the the this is the standard molecule. So this is going to be used for comparison purposes, right? Uh, then we have the anomers. So anomers are actually been orientation of the alpha or anomers means alpha or beta forms. So anomers are the monosaccharide that differ in the configuration of the OH group on to the carbonyl carbon or to the anomeric carbon. So you can see that. This is the linear chain uh, D-glucose molecules and when it is actually going to go through with the hemicetyl linkage formation, it actually can going to generate the additional chiral center onto this uh, first carbon. So onto the first carbon, if the OH is onto the right side, right, then it is actually going to be called as alpha form. Whereas if the OH is going to be onto the left side, then it is actually going to be called as beta form, right? So this is the alpha D beta form. This is the beta D beta form, right? Uh, then we have the mutant rotations. So monosaccharides containing the asymmetrical carbon atom rotate the plane polarized light. The change in the optical rotation when either form of the glucose is allowed to stand in a solution is the called as mutarotation. So you can see here is this is the alpha form and this is the beta form, right? So in the alpha form, you see the uh, optical rotation is 100 plus 112 degree. But if you allow this small sugar to stand on into the solutions, what will happen is it is going to re return back to the linear form. So with the, with, the, with the conversion of this particular sugar into a linear form, which is the D-glucose form, uh, it is actually going to change its optical rotation. So it's going to have the optical rotation of plus 52.5 degrees, uh, 5 degree. Whereas same is true for this one also. If you see the beta form, the beta form has the optical rotation of plus 19 degree. But on standing the sugar for uh, into the solution, it is actually going to get converted into the linear chain and that's how the optical rotation is going to be changed to 52.5 degree. Then the sugars actually can come together and they can be able to form the disaccharides. So when you have the two different sugars, right, you can have the uh, hemiacetyl formation, right, so on the both the sugar. So what will happen is that there will be a dehydration reaction. So there will be a dehydration reaction and because of that, there will be a loss of water molecule and there will be a linkage which is going to be formed between this and this. So what will happen is if there will be a loss of water and this is actually going to lose, then there will be a linkage which is going to be formed. This is going to be called as the glycosidic linkage. And the, the disaccharide what is going to be formed and you can read this as alpha d glucopyranosyl 1,4 d galactosidase. Why it is called as 1,4? Because you are actually making a linkage between the first carbon and the fourth carbon. So the OH what is present onto the fourth carbon and the first carbon is involved into the formation of the glycosidic linkages. So the individual monosaccharides utilizes their terminal hydroxyl group to form a glycosidic linkage to form the disaccharide with the loss of water. With the addition of the water, it can be hydrolyzed to form the individual monosaccharides. Different monosaccharides can participate to give you the different types of sugars. Same is true like if you add the, if you take the disaccharide, for example, this is the maltose, right? So if you take the maltose and if you add this uh, water, then what will happen is the water is actually going to hydrolyze this particular bond and that's how you are actually going to have the two sugar molecules. So you are going to have the alpha D glucose, see the OH is on to the lower side and you are going to have the beta D glucose where the OH is on to the uh, top side. Glycosidic linkages what has been formed into the sugar could be of two different types. You can have the O-glycosidic linkages or to the N-glycosidic linkages. O-glycosidic linkages, when the hydroxyl group on to the anoromeric carbon of a sugar react with a alcohol of the another sugar, uh, then that is called as the glycosidic O-linked glycosidic linkages such as just now we have seen here, right? In this one also we have seen, right? This is the 
all linked glycosidic linkages which means it is actually going to be between the first and the fourth carbon so this is the anomeric carbon right where you have the oh right so that OH is actually making a condensation with the another OH onto the fourth position and that is how it is actually going to form the O linked glycosidic linkages. These kind of linkages are present in the disaccharides, oligosaccharides and they are also present into the polysaccharide which means the O linked glycosidic linkages, O linked uh, glycosidic linkages are mostly being present into the sugar molecule. So sugar to sugar actually. Uh, then we have the N linked glycosidic uh, linkages. So, hydroxyl groups onto the anomeric carbon of the sugar reacts with an amine. They are present in the nucleotides, RNA, and the DNA. So, when you have the uh, sugar and you want to see the N linked glycosidic uh, form, uh, bond formations, you can see that into the formation of the nucleotides. So, remember then when we were discussing about the nucleotides, when we were discussing about the nucleic acid, right? So, nucleotides are being formed when the sugar is actually making a linkage with the base and I said, you know, this is this base linkage is actually going to be the glycosidic linkages. So, this is actually going to be the N linked glycosidic linkages. So, that is actually going to give you the bay, uh, nucleo nucleoside and when it is actually going to make a uh, pair with the phosphate, then it is actually going to give you the nucleotides. So, that is what is called as the N linked glycosylations, uh, N linked glycosidic bond formations and that is present in the different types of nucleotides which are present in the RNA or the DNA. Then type of uh, glycosidic bond or linkages. So, you can have the two different types of bonds. Uh, you can have the alpha bonds, right? Alpha 1,4 linkages just now we have seen, right? Or you can have the beta 1,4 linkages, right? So, if the anomeric hydroxyl is below the hydrogen, right? So, if the anomeric uh, then it is actually going to be called as alpha linkage, uh, alpha glycosidic linkage. So, it is still be O linked glycosylation, uh, O linked uh, uh, glycosidic bond formation, but it is going to be called as alpha linkage, which means it is going to be called as alpha 1, 4 uh, linkage. So, for example, in this case, this is the maltose, right? So, what we have is the, we have the OH onto the lower side, right? So, this is the alpha form, right? So, then if it is in uh, reacting with the another uh, OH onto the fourth position. So, this is the number one position which is the anomeric carbon, right? And this is the fourth position. Then uh, it is actually going to be called as alpha D glycopyranosyl 1,4 alpha D pyranoside, right? So, this is actually going to be a alpha 1,4 linkage, right? And why it is called as alpha 4? Because the OH what is being involved into the formation of the glycosidic linkage is actually be present into the alpha conformations. Then we have the another kind of thing where you have the lactose right. So, here the, uh, the OH is present in the beta conformation. So, if the what is the beta form bond? If the anomeric hydroxyl is above to the hydrogen. So, if the hydroxyl group is present into the beta conformation or beta form and if it is involved into the glycosidic bond formation then that will be called as beta linkage and for example here we have the beta 1 4 linkage so here we what we have is beta uh, d galactopyranosyl 1 4 beta d galactopyranosyl so here this is the structure of the lactose same kind of uh, glycosidic bond are actually going to be formed to give you rise to the polysaccharides. So, these are the polysaccharides. Uh, so, here the condensation of the different polysaccharides or the disaccharide will give rise to the polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are the storage form of sugar and it gives hydrolyze to give the monosaccharides to participate into the metabolism to produce the reducing equivalent to provide the energy by the electron transport chain. The examples are uh, like the starch uh, which is the storage uh, polysaccharides uh, present into the plants or we have the glycogen which is a storage uh, polysaccharide what is present into the animal. 
both the, the starch or the glycogen are actually being stored into the food as a, as a, in the form of a food and that's why they are actually going to be used for the energy production so what will happen is that polysaccharide whether it is uh, a glycogen for example right so glycogen is actually whenever there is a requirement of the energy the glycogen is actually going to be converted into the glucose and then the glucose will go into the metabolism and it is actually going to produce the energy same is true for the starch also as the anomeric carbon participate in the formation of glycosidic bond it has lost its ability to form the linear form of sugar as a result it becomes a non reducing sugar in the disaccharides or the polysaccharides the terminal sugar has the free anomeric carbon and called as the reducing sugar so if i want to know uh, whether a particular sugar is uh, so you can have the two different types of sugar right you, if you can have the sugar which is uh, reducing sugar right so or you can have the sugar which is non reducing sugar so what is mean by the reducing sugar so reducing sugar is in the case of disaccharides right where the terminal sugar has the free anomeric carbon and called as the reducing sugar whereas in the case of polysaccharide as the anomeric carbon is also participate into the glycosidic bond it has lost its ability to form the linear sugar as a result it becomes a non reducing sugar so let me explain this for example in the case of disaccharide what will happen is like suppose this is the one of the disaccharide sugar what will happen is that this is going to be formed right so this is going to be formed like this right but this is your anomeric carbon right where you have the oh and this is free so this for example if this is the maltose uh, which is uh, so i'm not showing the all other bonds but so this this is uh, the alpha 14 glycosidic linkage and that's how it is actually going to be uh, and this oh is free so this actually can participate into the uh, reduction and oxidation reactions right so this is going to be called as the reducing sugars whereas in the case of polysaccharide what will happen is that you can imagine that this oh if i convert the maltose into a polysaccharide or if you add some more sugar right so what will happen is this oh is again going to form an in bond so if you see the polysaccharides like it's like this so it's like this right so the this is the anomeric carbon right so this is your anomeric carbon this is the 14 right so if it is 14 linkage uh, this one is actually the fourth linkage this is the one this is four this is one this is four so you see the anomeric carbon is actually been involved into the formation of this particular bond so there is no free oh at the anomeric carbon what is present so that's why this is actually going to be called as the non reducing sugar now the question is how you actually can be able to know whether the given sugar is actually going to be the reducing or to the non reducing to know that you can actually be able to test the ability of a sugar to reduce the given uh, uh, compounds so glucose and the other sugars are capable of the reducing ferric or the cupric ion in the solution and are called as the reducing sugars they reduce and the color benedict and the failing solution with the aldehyde groups onto the sugar so what is the benedict test so if you want to know whether the sugar is reducing or non reducing what you can do is you can do a benedict test so benedict test is actually been a very simple test where what you can do is you can take the benedict reagents so what is benedict reagents benedict reagent is a combination of the anhydrous sodium by uh, sodium carbonate sodium citrate and it has a copper to sulfate pentahydrate which means it is actually going to have the copper 2 plus right and uh, in the uh, and this is going to be a blue colored reagents so uh, if you don't have a sugar it is going to give you the blue colored reagents so what you have to do is take a clean test tube and place inside the test tube 1 ml of the solutions 
okay so whatever the sugar solution you want to test whether it is a reducing or non reducing you take the uh, 1 ml of that particular solution then you put the 10 drops of the bending reagent into the test tube bring the solution to heat in a boiling water bath for approximately 5 minutes so what you can do is you can take a uh, 1 ml solution into the test tube and then you add with the help of the uh, right so you add the uh, sugar solution and then you add the small amount of the benedic reagents and then you are actually going to keep this into a water bath okay so when you boil this in a water bath uh, there will be a reaction between the sugar and the, the copper that is present into the benedic reagents and as a result you are actually going to see the change in the color into the particular benedic reagents uh, solution so what you will see is that if there will be no sugar what is present or if, if the sugar is non-reducing then it is actually going to give you the no change in the color so if there will be no change in color that could be because the sugar is non-reducing then if it is a uh, going to give you a slight green color, uh, color solutions then that will be called as that it is has a very small amount of reducing sugar then it is actually going to give you if it is going to give you the yellow color then it is going to be a moderate uh, amount of the reducing sugar and if it is give you the red color then it is actually going to say that you have a large quantity of the reducing sugar apart from the benedic reagents you can also use the filling solutions and you that also is going to give you the similar kinds of results so with this uh, we have understood the different types of properties of the monosaccharides we have understood the structure of the carbohydrates and we have also understood the uh, how you can be able to distinguish between the reducing and the non-reducing sugars apart from that in this particular lecture we have also discussed about the different types of uh, uh, isomeric uh, isomerism what is found into the sugar solution uh, sugar uh, monosaccharides and how the monosaccharides are coming together to give you the disaccharides it is actually forming the glycosidic linkages and these glycosidic linkages could be the uh, alpha type or to the beta types and apart from that we can have the two different types of glycosidic linkages either you can have the uh, uh, o-linked glycosidic uh, linkages or to the n-linked glycosidic linkages so with this brief discussion about the structure as well as the properties of the carbohydrates i would like to conclude my lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss about the uh, metabolism of the uh, carbohydrates and how the carbohydrates are participating into the uh, energy productions so with this i would like to conclude my lecture here thank you